I got the screen already. Well, thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. Can we show the movie now? No, no. We'll just wait until the ladies get here. Well, I wish they'd hurry up. Come on, Uncle Lloyd's going to show some pictures from his trip. Our trip, Larry, though you wouldn't know it. Sit over here, Mother. I'll sit here and run the music. Music? Well, you know Lloyd. This is a regular Hollywood production. Gee, how nice. Well, why not do it right? That's what I always say. That's the reason we travel like we did, you know. Um, say, would you remember now, uh, let's flip on the Victrola and <laughs> I flip on this, would you? I know. Okay. We've practiced enough. Well, I guess we're all these. Sure. All right. Oh, here we go. Say, that's a pretty clever title. What it doesn't say is that Mrs. Dodds went to Colorado, too. Boy, that's the train I want to ride. Shh. Shut up, Larry, and let Uncle Lloyd tell us about it. Go to it, Lloyd. Well, our holiday in Colorado actually began in Chicago. We left there late one afternoon on the Burlington Railroad's Vista Dome, Denver Zephyr, for a wonderful thousand-mile overnight trip to vacation land. We had what they call a, a double bedroom. It's a big, roomy, private apartment with all the comforts of home. Truly, I, I say, the, the very last word in luxury. It was beautifully decorated and gave me some ideas for our living room. Say, who's supposed to be telling this anyway? <laughs> Sorry, dear. I was carried away. You mean we were carried away and in style. You know, I've been on fine trains before, but never anything like this, believe me. Accommodations are just as luxurious, or perhaps even more so. Some of the rooms can be opened up together into suites. You know, that'd be just a thing for your family, Ted. Shut up, Larry. <laughs> and all the rooms have individual controls for heating, and air conditioning. The coaches, too, are spacious and comfortable with plenty of room to move about. Easy riding, too. In fact, the whole train rides so easily, it's hard to believe it breezes along as fast as 90 miles an hour. You really cover ground. The coach passengers can stretch out in comfort. There's even a folding leg rest, and the big roomy seats tilt way back so you can relax completely. I wanted to stay in our beautiful room a while longer, but Lloyd insisted we go back to the observation car. Sure thing. Now this is the rear lounge section on the last car. A delightful place to write a few postcards or read to the kids or just relax in whatever way suits you best. When we got back there, we headed right for the Vista Dome stopping only long enough to admire a handsome mural over the writing desk. And we were hungry. So we were among the early birds in the diner. We always get a big kick out of eating in a diner, you know. There's something just a little extra special and extra luxurious about dining car meals and service. That's one of the reasons we're so sold on train travel. And everybody else seemed to be enjoying it, too. You have a big selection to choose from. Personally, I took the prime ribs and wasn't the least bit sorry. But I could have had a steak or fried chicken or several other choices, and they all sounded mighty good. I can still taste those prime ribs. I think I should mention the service, too, because it was excellent. In fact, the whole crew was most friendly and courteous and made us feel right at home. After dinner, we got back in one of the Vista Domes just as we were crossing the Mississippi River at Burlington, Iowa. I wouldn't have missed that for anything. It looked so cool and peaceful at that time of the evening. Yes. As a matter of fact, it was just almost sunset. 
In fact, we headed right into the setting sun, leaving Burlington. Its golden rays and the shining silver of the train gave us a spectacular welcome to the West. We lingered in the Vista Dome for quite a while in the colorful afterglow of early evening. Later, we enjoyed a little recreation in the cozy Colorado room under the Vista Dome. Well, go on. Tell them about our Scrabble game. Well, uh, <clears throat> we played Scrabble. Anything else to tell? Plenty. I'll never forget the killing I made on this one. 48 points. <laughs> Luck. I'll say this for him. He was in such a good humor, he didn't even get mad. Well, not very mad. And as they say, so to bed. While we were away, the porter had made down the beds. We flipped a coin to see who was going to get the upper deck, and I won. You won? Sure. I got the upper deck. Yes, but you didn't give up without a struggle. You know all the sleeping cars on the Denver Zephyr are the most modern and comfortable ever built. Like this roomette, for example. An ideal accommodation for one person traveling alone. You have your own toilet and lavatory, and it's completely private. You can sit up as long as you like and go to bed whenever you feel like it. All roomettes, bedrooms, and compartments on the train feature super soft, extra wide foam rubber mattresses. If you like to stretch out and read in bed, you can do so in perfect comfort. Or you can turn out the light and let the gentle motion of the train just carry you off to dreamland. And then there's the slumber coach. Here, the coach passengers get a private room of their own. The window seat converts to a comfortable bed at night, and all it costs is the coach fare plus a modest charge for the private room. Each slumber coach room has its own compact private facilities, too. It's a real deal. Gives you room privacy at a bargain price. After a wonderful sleep, we were up bright and early the next morning. Bright, maybe, but not really early. In fact, many of the passengers had already left the train at Denver before we got to the chuck wagon for breakfast. Well, of course, we were going on to Colorado Springs, so there was no real hurry. You know, the Denver Zephyr goes through to Colorado Springs on the Rio Grande Railroad, so you don't have to change in Denver. about these wonderful wood carvings. Well, they were done by Lorne Wallace, a famous Colorado sculptor, especially for this chuck wagon car to carry out the western motif, if you'll pardon the fancy word, but they're terrific. There are several beautiful western murals in the car, too. This is one of the Vista Dome cars, and underneath the dome is an attractive lunch counter section. We found a comfortable booth off to one side under another attractive painting, where we took a couple of healthy appetites for a hearty Western breakfast. we had time to go upstairs in the Vista Dome for our first good look at the Rockies. And there is America's most famous mountain, Pikes Peak. Colorado Springs is right at its base, so we're there almost too soon. There are many fine places to stay in Colorado Springs, including the stately Antlers Hotel. And the famous Broadmoor, of course, we've heard about the Broadmoor all of our lives, so it was a real thrill to actually be there. 
We made right for the patio out to the swimming pool. What luxury just to sit there and relax and look at the mountains. Boy, what a view. Don't let him kid you. He wasn't looking at the mountains. Well, anyway, while we were there, they put on a fine exhibition of plain and fancy diving. Here is the plane. And here's the fancy. But much as we enjoyed just sitting there, we decided to go climb a mountain. Now don't laugh, we really did. But here's how. This is a little cog railway up Cheyenne Mountain, just like a big one up Pikes Peak. Well, we got to the top without even getting out of breath and visited the Shrine of the Sun. It's built right on the very edge of the mountains and dedicated to the great cowboy humorist who never met a man he didn't like, Will Rogers. From the top of the mountain, we got a marvelous view of the Broadmoor and its golf course. It was a tournament in progress. Next, we visited the Garden of the Gods, where great slabs of reddish sandstone have been eroded by wind and water into grotesque shapes. This group is known as the Cathedral Spires. These are the Kissing Camels. And here is the famous Balanced Rock. Wherever you go in the Colorado Springs region, you just can't get away from Pikes Peak. So since we couldn't get away from it, we decided to get as close as possible. At nearby Manitou Springs, we boarded the famous Pikes Peak Cog Railway. It was just like the Vista Domes on the Denver Zephyr. Well, almost. Tell him what the guide told us about Lieutenant Pike. Well, he told us that when Pike discovered this mountain in 1806, that he tried to climb it, but when he failed, he flatly predicted that no one would ever be able to climb it. But we made it. And here we are at the top. From the observation tower, you can look down on thousands of square miles of the Earth's surface, clear to the eastern horizon, more than a hundred miles away. Of course, Lloyd had to get a picture of the sign at the top. And then, just to be different, we took a sightseeing bus for the trip down. And this gave us some new thrills. I'll say. We're not used to these mountain roads. Oh, now it's a good road, and that bus driver really knew what he was doing. I'll admit that a couple of times I thought he was going to miss the scenery and hit the view, but I really wasn't worried. Going one way and returning the other is a good way to do it because the Cog Railway and the Auto Road are on opposite sides of Pikes Peak, so you get twice as much scenery that way. That afternoon, we went on to Denver and stayed overnight at the Park Lane. It's one of many fine hotels there. The following morning, we started out early again, by bus, into the mountains straight west from Denver. In one of Denver's mountain parks, we stopped briefly to watch a herd of bison which roamed the plains by the hundreds of thousands back in Buffalo Bill's day. And then on to luxurious Troutdale in the Pines. It's typical of Colorado's many fine resorts. On again, over smooth highways which tunnel right through great rock cliffs. And on through what once was a fabulous gold mining territory, the richest on earth while it lasted. Now this is really where Colorado got its start. This old water wheel, still turning, once powered the primitive ore mills of the pioneers. And this cute little old Burlington train, long since retired, helped to open up the country back in the rip-roaring 80s. It's now a favorite attraction with tourists and shutterbugs here at historic Idaho Springs. From above the town, 
we got a wonderful view of mighty Mount Evans. It's even higher than Pikes Peak. And then we traveled on to another of Colorado's superb resorts. Gee, I'd like to spend a month in each one of them. This lodge is right at the foot of St. Mary's Glacier, a river of ice and snow. We watched some crazy mixed up skiers who apparently didn't even know that it was midsummer. I suppose next winter, when there's plenty of snow all over, they'll want to cut a hole in the ice down there on St. Mary's Lake and do a little fishing. Well, anything can happen in Colorado. And here we go again, on northward through the mountains to Estes Park Village. It's located in an open mountain park on the shores of Lake Estes. The water in this lake came through a 13-mile tunnel from the western side of the Continental Divide. It's part of what they call the Big Thompson Diversion Project. Here's where we climbed another mountain. Yes, you know we couldn't resist a ride on the Skyway. It runs to the top of Prospect Mountain. Now each of the two cabins holds about 12 people with plexiglass all around, so you can not only see where you're going, but where you've been. It's just like a vista dome. And they move right along too. One car goes up while the other comes down. It takes only a few minutes to make a trip each way. At the top, there's an observation platform where you get a spectacular view of the park. I think that's the same view you were looking at down at the Broadmoor. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they probably followed me. <laughs> they didn't give you much encouragement. But it was funny how we kept seeing those same two girls. I don't know. Estes Park has ample accommodations of every kind, from luxurious hotels, like the Stanley, to economical cabins. We stayed at the Estes Park Chalet. Next morning, we again got an early start. Estes Park, you know, is the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. A quarter of a million acres of rugged, gorges, broad valleys, and spectacular peaks of alpine lakes and plunging streams. Here is where we went through the park gates and then turned off on a side road for an interesting little detour. We made a brief visit to Stead's Ranch, a typical mountain dude ranch where the regular guests were just starting out for a horseback ride. Miles of well-kept trails in the park lead to unspoiled beauty spots, which can only be reached on horseback or afoot. by Elkhorn Ranch in an incomparable setting, we enjoyed watching some swimming pool activity. Now, a swimming pool is always fun, and many of Colorado's resorts and dude ranches now have their own, with the water warm just enough to remove the mountain chill. A short distance away, we made a longer stop at beautiful Bear Lake, it's just one of scores of sparkling mountain lakes in Rocky Mountain National Park. We had time to stroll along its shore, surrounded by towering peaks and glaciers, and to revel in the peaceful charm of this mountain wonderland. All around us, nature presented an endless spectacle of beauty. Colorful wildflowers in profusion, including perfect examples of Colorado State flower, the delicate columbine. Rushing, tumbling torrents. Playful, scudding clouds in an azure sky. This was Colorado on a summer's day. Why, Lloyd, that was almost poetry, but it was a beautiful day. And the best was yet to come. Up ahead there is Ypsilon Peak as we start west toward the Continental Divide. The highway, United States 34, which is known here as the Trail Ridge Road, climbs higher and higher toward the crest of the continent. From Rainbow Curve, we looked back at the eastern side of the park and then continued on to the top, nearly 12,000 feet in the sky, truly on top of the world. 
At the summit, we stop to enjoy the view and to watch a friendly snow fight in midsummer. Off to the west, the crags of the Never Summer Range shelter eternal snowbanks. To the east, the rugged Mummy Range. West of the summit, the highway leads downward to the headwaters of the Colorado River and Grand Lake. At Grand Lake Lodge, we found a spacious resort with traditional friendly Western hospitality. Grand Lake, a part of Rocky Mountain National Park, has an unsurpassed natural setting. A mile and a half above sea level, it's completely surrounded by wooded hillsides and towering peaks. The beach is a popular spot on a warm summer day. You can cool off fast in that lake because the water comes from the snow banks we saw up on the Continental Divide. Take it easy, honey. You'll freeze your little footsies. We walked out on the pier to get a closer look at the water sports. Say, how come you seldom get men in any of your pictures? Well, I don't know. It just seems to happen that way. Besides, I think girls are prettier. Water skiing is one of the favorite sports here. We went out in one of the boats to get these shots. Believe me, that was exciting. Not so exciting, perhaps, but even more picturesque are the yachts, another top sport here. The Grand Lake Yacht Club has the highest anchorage in the world, and the midsummer Lipton Cup Regatta is the year's big event. Near Grand Lake, in the parks and valleys of central Colorado, is one of the mountain state's great dude ranch areas. Dude Ranch guests enjoy riding with the cowboys on Roundup and participating in the workaday activities of the ranch. Now, any kind of Colorado vacation is wonderful, but a Dude Ranch experience puts the frosting on the cake. These ranches all have well-trained Western cowponies, sure-footed and even-tempered at home on the trails of the high country's wilderness, where the deer and the antelope play. And then there's fishing. The tumbling streams of the Rockies just teem with scrappy trout. And the nice part about it is that a novice can land one once in a while. And speaking of novices, take a look at this. Well, I got the fish, didn't I? You take a look at that. Whatever you do on your Colorado Dude Ranch vacation, you're constantly surrounded by the beauty of the Rockies with its lakes and mountains, its forests and canyons, the fresh, clean out of doors. You'll find it's easy to make friends in the friendly west. The climax of all dude ranch vacations is the outdoor steak fry. While the ranch cook prepares the meal at a nearby picnic spot, you and the other guests talk quietly in the peaceful evening stillness. As one of the old timers speaks of Colorado in other seasons, you picture to yourself the flaming colors of autumn, the fabled Indian summer with the quivering leaves of the aspen turned brilliant gold, in contrast with the deep, rich tones of spruce and pine. And then you see, in your imagination, winter's soft white mantle roving the hillsides. As the snows pile deeper, the slopes are transformed into a winter wonderland, a veritable playground for winter sports enthusiasts. you follow happy comrades down a lightning-fast slope deep with Colorado powder snow, 
and you just feel the exhilaration of this matchless sport. You picture the unearthly beauty of a winter's eve in the soft light of a low riding moon. The delightful aroma of broiling steak soon permeates the air and puts a happy end to your reverie. The invitation to come and get it doesn't have to be repeated. And believe me, we went and got it. Yes, you've never really eaten till you've had a steak cooked in the open air, thick, juicy, and tender. You know, a day in the crisp Colorado air whets the appetite to a razor's edge. I was certainly amazed at the amount I put away, and I enjoyed every bite of it. relaxed and content, we luxuriated in the friendly companionship of the campfire, a memorable climax to an unforgettable vacation. Next day, we returned to Denver and had time for a brief look at Mile High City. This is the state capitol on Capitol Hill. Now that dome is covered with pure leaf gold from Colorado's own mines. From the balcony surrounding the dome, Denver's fast-changing skyline is backed by the rugged peaks of the Front Range. And then it was back on board the Vista Dome Denver Zephyr again for a fast, comfortable overnight trip home. It's the finest way to travel on America's finest train.